for joining this evening. My name is Diana Jingles. I'm the Associate Dean of Admission and Coordinator of Transfer Admission at Providence College. And tonight I'm joined by Lily and Celine, um, both are current Providence College students and former transfer students. Um, and they also work closely with our um, orientation program. So you'll be meeting them um, in different capacities. Um, they, they work closely with our orientation leaders. I'm sorry, you are orientation leaders. And, um, and with that as well, um, I, over the course of the next 45 minutes or so, you're going to hear from me. I'll be explaining the admission process at Providence, um, specifically the transfer process. And, um, and even before that, I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview of what it means to be a student at Providence College and some of the unique qualities that are offered at Providence and some things that you can start thinking about um, as you work through that application for your transfer admission process. And, um, and then after um, I'm through talking about some of the information about Providence College, I'm going to turn it over to Lily and Celine. They're both going to explain some of their student experiences, um, but we're also going to open it up for different questions as well. And, um, and within that, um, you can ask different questions of all three of us <laughs> um, throughout um, that Q&A session. So, I do ask that um, for everyone on the panel, if you have questions throughout the session, by all means, please use the Q&A feature at the bottom of um, the session and type in your different questions throughout our presentation and we will get to those during our Q&A at the end. Um, so by all means, if you think of something, go ahead and type it in the, the Q&A and, um, and we'll get to that question towards the end. Um, but um, before, um, before I, I wait any longer, I'm just going to share my screen and start um, our presentation, really thinking about the different opportunities at Providence College. And um, for all of you, when you were putting Providence on um, your list of, of different schools to consider, you probably noticed that um, we are small, private, Catholic, liberal arts and in the Northeast. And that's a pretty common designation in this region. Uh, but one of the really helpful things about Providence is that um, we are really close to a vibrant city. It's kind of a college town in itself. There's lots to explore, lots of different colleges within the area. And um, it really is a chance for students to um, get the best of both worlds. Um, our campus isn't spread out all over the city. It's in one central location. And so our students really feel at home on campus, but then they do have complete access to the downtown area, to a lot of different opportunities in the greater Providence area. Um, and you also probably noticed that uh, we are the only school founded and administered by the Dominican Friars. A lot of schools with that Catholic Dominican affiliation are administered by the sisters. Um, but we are pretty unique in that we are administered by the friars. And, um, and with that, there are about 40 or so friars in and around campus in different capacities. Uh, we also have Division I Athletics. We're a founding member of both the Big East and Hockey East conferences, and uh, we are one of the smallest schools within those conferences. Um, so it's really exciting when our teams do very, very well against some very large name competitors. And, um, and then too, 91% of our students are returning for that, um, that second year. And, um, and certainly the community on campus, students are very involved. They get to know one another. They um, are really engaged within um, their campus setting and within their work here on campus. But um, overall, right around 4,000 students total. So I mentioned we're, we're kind of that smaller, medium-sized school. We do have Division I athletics, but we're in, we're a much smaller school environment. And, um, and with that too, our students really have the chance to um, get to know one another in lots of different capacities. That average class size is right around 20 students and that student faculty ratio is right around 12 to one. So our students really have the chance to um, work closely with faculty members, get to know one another very well and, um, and, and make lots of different connections while they're here on campus. Um, but uh, the Dominican tradition, of course, on campus is very unique. I mentioned that we are administered by the Dominican friars. And, um, and with those Dominican friars, you'll get to know them in lots of different capacities. A lot of students are always wondering, what does that really mean for me as a student on campus? And St. Dominic believed that a student's pursuit of truth, veritas, veritas is the Latin word for truth, and it's also our college motto. But in that student's pursuit of truth, 
a student has a balance between faith and reason. And so that balanced education is something that we hope every single student is able to come away with. And balance is really kind of that key, um, a key element to our curriculum at Providence. And so you're going to see lots of different majors and minors, different academic programs that are offered at Providence. Um, and students really are able to delve into um, their major and, and very intensive um, courses within their chosen discipline. But then they're also having a full mixture of courses throughout different disciplines that they also get to explore. So we do have a full liberal arts curriculum that every single student is part of. And with that, um, students are going to be taking different classes across different disciplines, philosophy, theology, natural sciences, and social sciences, quantitative reasoning, fine arts, and um, the development of Western civilization course, which I'll explain a little bit later. Um, but one of the things as transfer students, um, we'll also be looking at the different courses that you've taken during your time in college. And, um, and we'll be looking to see what courses at your current college will um, cross over with different courses that are part of our, your major. Um, and then also um, we'll fulfill different core curriculum components as well. So that all comes throughout our review and something I'll get to in a little bit later. Um, but just so you're aware that there is that core curriculum that allows you to explore different disciplines and, um, and specifically to that development of Western civilization course is really at the core of um, that core curriculum. It's kind of the cornerstone. Um, and within that, that's the one class that all of our students take during their time at Providence. And um, within that, it is um, a total of four semesters. So the first three semesters are focused on the different time periods, ancient, medieval, and modern time periods. But more than just focusing in on that historical timeline, you're really thinking a lot about the different facets of our society, different philosophical and theological movements, literature, art, music, and how they've all influenced and affected one another. Um, and then within that too, um, really understanding our society, how we've changed, how we've learned from mistakes, or how we've repeated those mistakes. And that final semester is a focus on a modern day issue. So the colloquia class, as a focus on a modern day issue where students really have the opportunity to hone in on an issue relevant to Western tradition and, um, and really unpack it. Um, so these colloquia classes, they are taught by faculty members from all over campus who are collaborating on these colloquia classes. And it's really your chance to delve into a particular issue or subject area. It could relate to your major, could be something totally different. Um, but again, striking that sense of balance, having that opportunity to work so closely with your fellow students and faculty members, um, to have your perspective and ideas shared, and also to learn from other perspectives and other, um, other students with their expertise from their chosen discipline. That's all part of that sense of balance and, um, and really bringing together lots of different ideas that are, are very much part of our core curriculum at Providence. Um, as transfer students, just to be aware, depending upon your standing, that will determine whether or not you take uh, two semesters or three semesters of our Development of Western Civilization course. So this is a course that um, it will not um, be fulfilled by courses that you've taken at your current college. You are required to take um, a portion of the de Development of Western Civilization program. Um, but depending upon which standing you come in with, um, that will determine whether or not you're taking two or three semesters of the course. And you have some choices and selections in how um, you're able to fulfill the course in terms of um, the different um, semesters, ancient, medieval, modern, and, and how you would like to take that colloquia class. Um, so there is some flexibility there. But within that, I mentioned small class sizes, those opportunities, opportunities to really work closely with faculty members, um, 36% of our students recently were engaged in research work on campus. And, um, and with that too, um, our students are taking advantage of opportunities to get involved in research opportunities with faculty members. A lot of faculty members are engaged in research work and they specifically bring on our undergraduate students with that research. Um, a lot of our faculty members too are research advisors. So students have the opportunity to apply for different research grants. Um, and with that too, we've been a top producer of Fulbright scholars for the past five years. And I think that really speaks to how students are able to delve in so, um, so fully to their academic world, um, but also to 
um, to build their academic resume. Um, we also uh, were recently awarded a chapter of Phi Beta Kappa, which I also think really resonates and, um, and explains our commitment to the liberal arts at Providence and um, especially to gaining real world experiences. It's around 95% of our students who were in, engaged in some type of career related experience, whether it be an internship or opportunity um, to work closely within their field. So um, there are lots of different resources and different um, people, mentors who are able to help you get to where you need to be um, academically um, and, and exploring some of your different professional opportunities. Um, a lot of students, too, um, will also take part in study abroad opportunities. Um, it's usually about 60% of our students who are in their junior year who take advantage of some type of study abroad opportunity, um, whether it be a semester, full year, or summer program. Um, there are transfer students who are able to study abroad, um, so don't think that it's off the table. Um, it's just a matter of planning and working with your faculty advisor, uh, working with our Center for Global Education to really determine what's going to be the best study abroad program suited for you, suited for your program, and, and what are going to be some things that you'll be able to take advantage of while you study abroad. Um, but you'll also notice, um, if you come to campus, you probably have noticed our center at Moore Hall, which is, um, it actually used to be the former site for our Development of Western Civilization program. Um, that program is now in our humanities um, building, um, the Ruane Humanities Center. But um, the center at Moore Hall um, is, is really a space where, um, they, when they re-envisioned it and reimagined it, um, it's really a place where all of our different students can come together with different ideas, perspectives, a lot of club organizations um, and programming happens at the center at Moore Hall to allow for lots of ideas to be shared, um, voices to be heard and issues to be discussed. And within this, it, it made so much sense for um, the center at Moore Hall to um, be placed within this building um, and, and on this site because of all of the different ideas that have consistently been shared um, at, at Moore Hall. So um, certainly you'll see this if you would ever come to campus to um, take a tour, you'll see the center at Moore Hall. Um, there are lots of different community events that will also be sponsored um, at Moore. But um, certainly too, a lot of students are always wondering what support they'll have on campus in terms of what's going to be available to me in terms of uh, opportunities to um, have somebody look over my paper or um, connect with a mentor or um, seek out some different mental health um, opportunities, different mental health um, uh, resources. And within that, um, there are lots of different opportunities at Providence. Through our Office of Academic Services, you'll have a lot of different peer tutors and, um, and then also to um, different individuals who are there to help you really prepare for different exams, um, go over your paper. We have a full writing center. You'll also see too, um, the PC1G program is a program specifically for our first generation students who are interested in closely connecting with a faculty or staff member. So we have a number of PC1G mentors on our staff and, um, and they're there to, to connect with our students. Um, our Horizons program also offers a lot of different opportunities for our students to connect um, from different multicultural backgrounds, but also um, for different mentorship opportunities uh, and also for um, different class retreats and, and uh, different retreats through Horizons. Um, and then certainly too, the Personal Counseling Center offers a number of different mental health resources for students. And um, you'll see um, some of our different student clubs and organizations specifically relate to uh, different mental health programs through the Counseling Center as well. But I could go um, on and on with some of the different opportunities. This is a full list of all of the different student clubs and organizations on campus. It's a pretty wide variety. Um, Lily and Celine will be able to explain a little bit more about some of the different student clubs and organizations they're involved with, but you'll see we have a lot of um, larger umbrella groups like our campus ministry organization has a number of faith-based sharing groups and service organizations and social justice ministries. We have a number of different um, cultural and language clubs, different um, media clubs, and, um, and then also performance groups and professional and academic groups. Um, so you'll see uh, quite a few of our different student organizations will also have some type of service component tied to their general club duties. And, um, and then with that too, you'll also see obviously some very specific service um, organizations. 
we were the first college campus to offer a public and community service major. And so with that, there are also different service-based learning classes that students can take. And, and then to um, service in and around the greater Providence area, we have a number of different partnerships um, throughout the city that um, we have with campus and our students are consistently involved in lots of different ways. Um, so you'll also notice too, um, that there are different student boards. So you'll see our Board of Multicultural Student Affairs and they coordinate a lot of our different cultural organizations as well as um, performance groups, some different student interest groups, um, and then our board of programmers, they're responsible for a ton of different programming that happens on campus. Um, so they coordinate different programming groups and, um, and from small scale events to large scale events. And, and then to our intramural athletic board, they're responsible for coordinating all of our different intramural sports. And uh, we joke as an office that if our students can create a competition out of something, they'll definitely make it an intramural sport. So um, you'll see quite a few different intramurals that are offered for students and those um, are for all athletic abilities. Um, and so with that, um, there's quite a bit that our students can get involved with um, and be active in. Obviously, it's very exciting to cheer on some of your fellow students. Um, especially when we do very well in some very, very um, steep competition against, um, against larger name schools. But um, certainly within that, a lot of our students are able to really connect closely with one another. Um, and then also they have that full city of Providence to take advantage of. So um, I won't go into all the details about what um, there, there is to do on campus. I'll leave that to um, Celine and Lily. But um, for now, let's uh, talk about the admission process and specifically the transfer admission process uh, to Providence College. So for all of you who are considering that transfer process to Providence, um, you'll know that we are in the common application. And within that, um, you'll see lots of different elements to the common application specifically for transfer students. And, um, and first and foremost, one of the things that we start to do when we review a student's application is um, we'll be looking through academic information. And then um, to um, just to be aware, we are a test optional institution. So um, you'll notice within um, the application that it does ask whether or not you would like test scores to be considered. We've been test optional since 2006. It was a really easy decision on our part um, when we went test optional. So, and of course, during the pandemic, we felt super prepared. So um, within that, um, you will have the chance whether or not to indicate you would like your test scores to be considered within the application process. Um, but um, just to go in more depth with the holistic review process that we conduct, um, some of the academic information that we will first begin to review when we receive your application um, is the official high school transcripts and official college transcripts. Um, so with the different um, transcripts, you'll want to make sure that you gather official copies of that high school transcript, have them sent directly from your high school to our campus. Um, same goes with any official college transcripts. To make them official, they do need to come directly from that institution to Providence. Um, so there might be a chance to order them online or connect um, with your advisor or somebody at the school to have them sent directly to our office. Um, with that, once we receive those official transcripts, we'll be able to start reviewing your application. Um, the high school transcript does need to include a, gra a final graduation date. And we do that because um, with our students, um, we do need to see that they have graduated high school. If a student has a GED, um, we do need to see that they've completed a full associate's degree in order to apply to Providence as a transfer student. Um, with that too, um, you'll also notice that we do require that transfer college report. So that transfer college report is a form, you'll see it through Common App, and that transfer college report really gives us an indication. Um, there's a, a portion at the bottom that will be need to build, be filled out by a college official. It gives us an indication that you are in good academic and disciplinary standing. So that form is necessary for us to review your application. And the form you can download, um, we actually have it right on our transfer webpage. Um, so you can download that form, you complete the top portion and then ask somebody at your college, some type of college official, maybe in the records office to complete the bottom portion. Somebody who has access to both your academic and um, student records will need to complete that college report. And that can be sent directly to our office, um, right to our Providence admission office. Um, any 
anything can also be emailed. So students don't need to um, send paper copies. They can they can share um, our Providence College admission email address directly with um, directly with their their different schools um, or advisor who might be sending these different forms. Um, you'll also notice that we do require course descriptions and class syllabi for the different classes that you would like articulated. Um, so I mentioned before when we are going through and reviewing the different college classes that you've taken advantage of, um, we will also send information to our academic offices so they can really understand what your college classes will translate to on our um, curriculum. So within that, the different course descriptions are really needed in order to um, understand the content of the course. If the course descriptions don't give us enough information, we'll reach out and ask for a class syllabus. And usually the class syllabus can be something that you just request from the department head or um, from your former, former faculty member. And um, any course descriptions or class syllabi, those will need to be sent directly to syllabi at providence.edu. So we will send you a couple of reminders, just reminding you to send over that academic information. Um, we do need that information in order to completely articulate your different classes to Providence. Um, another thing too, I mentioned before, um, test scores are optional. Oops. Um, and within that, um, our students can decide whether or not they would like any test scores to be considered. Recommendation letters, those are also optional. Um, one thing that I would recommend making sure that you complete within the application is um, take advantage of the different essays. Um, so there's a short personal essay and then also a Providence specific essay to take advantage of. It really helps us better understand why you're applying to Providence as a transfer student and what are some of the things you're hoping to gain out of your time as a student at Providence. Um, within that too, you'll also notice that the midterm report is optional. So I do, I do recommend this, especially if a student is applying for spring term admission or if they're a first year student applying for spring term admission, that midterm report is extremely helpful in our review. Um, it can also really be helpful just to give us a sense for how you're doing within your current classes. Um, and then to, uh, for a full list of all of these different items that we consider within the review process, um, you can check out our transfer webpage it's providence.edu slash transfer dash information. And you'll see a full overview of all of the different items I just mentioned. Um, you'll also see a link to um, that transfer college report and also a link to that syllabi at providence.edu email address. So feel free to check that out. Um, but also some things to be aware of. Uh, so there are different application deadlines for our transfer students. Um, for students who are interested in spring term admission, it's a December 1 application deadline. So we begin review in November. Um, so we start our review November 1, and, um, and then that final application deadline is December 1. Um, because of the tight timeline uh, for spring term admission, uh, we do begin that application review in November, and if students have a completed application, they've gotten in all of their transcripts, the college report, and their class syllabi, um, we will start that review and, um, and likely have that decision to the student two to three weeks after they've submitted all of that information. So within that, um, we do try and be as quick and efficient as possible because we do know that you are under a timeline. Um, as spring semester will start in, in mid-January and we want to make sure that you have enough time to go through and, and decide um, whether or not to enroll at Providence. You'll also know that, or you'll also notice that our fall term admission deadline is an April 1 priority deadline. Um, so we do um, have a priority de deadline of April 1 and then that final deadline is May 15th. And, um, and with that, um, there is that final May 15th deadline because we wanna make sure that students get their information into us. Um, and also to the fall term, April 1 priority deadline also makes students eligible to be considered for the um, St. Rose Scholarship, which I'll explain in a little bit. Um, but within that, um, we do encourage students to make sure if they are applying for fall term to get their application in by April 1. Um, you'll also notice below that there are different um, financial aid deadlines for our transfer students. So um, below you'll, you'll see that um, May 15th is the deadline for both CSS 
profile and FAFSA. And then it's a, um, an, a May 20th deadline for any business tax returns. So that's for fall transfer. For spring transfer students, it is a December 1 deadline. And uh, within that, the financial aid office does require the CSS profile and FAFSA in order to consider a student for need-based financial aid. So make sure you're um, filling out the information, make sure you're sending the forms uh, to Providence for both CSS profile and FAFSA. Um, so I mentioned before that we do have that St. Rose Scholarship, which is um, a transfer merit scholarship. So you'll see um, that students are only considered for this scholarship who apply for fall term admission. So um, we strongly recommend students who want to be considered for the St. Rose Scholarship to apply by April 1. And within that, um, selections are based upon academic work and where the students fall within our pool. Um, and usually students have a three, five or better within their current college work. Um, we also do require a full year of college work in order to be considered for that St. Rose scholarship. Um, so you'll see an overview here. Um, we make selections um, for the $20,000 scholarship. It is the only merit scholarship that we do offer to, um, to transfer students. And within that, um, we, that, um, that scholarship is um, available. Um, it continues for a student's time at Providence, um, but not beyond their expected graduation day at the, at the time of enrollment. Um, so you'll see that um, there, are, there is a, a term to that scholarship and within that it is renewable each year. Um, so within that, um, certainly I want to make sure that all students realize that this scholarship is only available for fall term admission. And again, the April 1 deadline is strongly recommended for students in order to be considered for the St. Rose Scholarship. Um, beyond this too, um, you'll also notice that um, our students are, are pretty involved in, oops, that's not the, not the slide I thought it was. Um, but you'll also notice too that um, our students are pretty involved within the application process and um, any questions that should come um, about the scholarship, by all means, feel free to reach out to me. Happy to answer some of those questions. Um, beyond this as well, just wanted to give you kind of an overview of where our students go after their time at Providence. I think it's very helpful to see um, how students are, are doing during their, their time at Providence in terms of taking advantage of different resources, um, but then going beyond just their four years on campus. And um, before um, you notice that 95% of our students were involved in some type of uh, career related experience or internship. And these are some of the different places where um, our students are then going after they graduate from Providence. And, um, and with that too, I think one of the things that is so helpful for our students is the opportunity to connect with lots of different resources on campus and the opportunity to connect with lots of different individuals who can share different ideas, perspectives, um, but then also um, give you some, some insight into what's going to be really helpful to propel yourself beyond just your four years in college. Um, so um, with, with that, um, I do want to turn it over to Lily and Celine, who will be explaining a little bit about um, their experiences on campus. So um, I am going to exit out of this screen and bring them back. Great. Okay, so um, for both of you, um, by all means, please feel free to introduce yourself, um, your name, major, graduation year, and, um, and then without naming the college or university that you left, um, tell us a little bit about what made you to decide to transfer to Providence College. Lily, if you want to start, go ahead. I can start. Yes, um, so my name is Celine. I am a biology major with a writing minor and I am class of 2022. So that's coming up very soon, very scary. I, what made me, I wanted to stay in like an actual campus. I didn't want it to be like, you know, spread all over the city. So that was one of the main things that really drove me to PC. And I also, I'm from Rhode Island. So I kind of wanted to stay also in the area. So I was looking at schools primarily around here. 
and I had a friend that was going to PC and she said she loved it. And I ended up falling in love with like the liberal arts curriculum and the research opportunities and that kind of thing. And they had a really good, and I saw they had a really good bio program. So um, yeah, here I am. Awesome. Hi everyone, my name is Lily Sampfi. I'm from Swampstown, Massachusetts. I'm also class of 2022, so I'm a senior right now. I'm a health policy and management major with a business and innovation minor. And I came to PC because I wanted to come to a smaller school. The school that I came from was very large, just like Celine said, um, kind of in a city. And class size was just a little bit too big for me, big lecture halls. And just a way I kind of found out that my learning um, capabilities were better in a smaller classroom, which I have been in love with um, the past two years I've been here at PC. I've really excelled in all of my classes and also the school I came from didn't have um, a health policy program. So I started off as political science and kind of moved my way into um, health policy and management, but really um, focusing on health insurance and policy together. So coming to PC was kind of like the perfect um, idea for me. And for the past almost, uh, wow, it's almost two and a half years now that I've been here, I've just really been dedicated to pursuing um, campus life, but also my academic journey. So it's been great. Awesome. Yeah. And, and um, you both mentioned um, different research and internship opportunities. Can you explain um, some of the things that you've been able to do, um, both getting involved on campus um, and, and what you're, you're doing, what your involvement is, and then also to um, what are some of the different um, research and um, internship opportunities you've been able to take advantage of or are planning to take advantage of? So for me right now, I'm currently doing research on bipolar disorder with one of the faculty in the psychology department, even though I'm a bio major. And I get to present that at the psychology uh, conference at the end of the year, which is pretty exciting. And that's something that I would have never been able to do as long like, if I didn't come here. Um, so that's something I, like, I really, really enjoy. And for internships, I recently applied for one on Brown. Brown and PC tend to you know, collaborate quite a bit when it comes to that kind of thing, especially with those in the science uh, department. I'm not sure about any other department for that, but yeah. And for like involvement in school, I, like you mentioned, I was an orientation leader and that made, I mean, that's how I met Lily. Tons of friends there. You become even friends with like the students that you help out. I'm also part of the hunger and poverty outreach. So every week I'm just helping out with other people and you know, connecting with them. And I'm also doing the immersion trip in January. So tons of, you know, opportunities to connect and community build and that kind of thing. Awesome. Yeah, just like Celine said, I think something that's really special about PC is how small it is, but how many clubs we really do have on campus. You saw the list. Um, it's a lot. I, I would say the biggest club I'm involved in is orientation. So Celine and I were, um, two of the transfer orientation leaders this past summer and fall. And like she said, we met a million people that way. Um, last year when I was a junior, even though um, orientation was primarily remote for us and most of the incoming um, freshmen and transfer students, I still met some of my best friends that way. And they're still my best friends to this day. Um, a few other clubs I'm involved in is club tennis, um, dance club, healthcare club, and I'm actually a spin instructor here for rec sports on campus, which is wicked fun because I get to work out and make a little bit of money, which is great. And I do research with one of my professors, Dr. Robert Hackey. I've been working with him for almost a year now um, on a podcast around the hospital merger here in Rhode Island. So he actually um, helped us set up the whole thing. We have a published podcast on Spotify. And I also got to um, publish my own op-ed in a journal back at home. So I have a published piece of work, which is a great resume builder, but something I'm very passionate about. Um, and a great talking point, especially during interviews for um, different jobs or internships. So I ended up having an internship over the summer and I'm still at it here in the fall at Blue Cross Blue Shield of Rhode Island. So the connections inside of each department for me, health policy and management helps me um, thoroughly through my investigation through, you know, finding different research opportunities, but also finding out what kind of career path I want to go down. So 
like I said, I can't thank um, my professors enough to kind of help that one-on-one -on -one connection that I really just didn't have at a big school and that I do have here at PC. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, um, and I guess um, one of the things that a lot of students are always um, interested in knowing, you know, um, in your involvement and in the things you've been able to do, how easy was it to meet people and, and start doing these activities? Um, you know, what, what was that transition like? Did you, did it take a little time or um, what advice would you have for students? I just like get out there. I mean, you have, like if you join a club or, you know, just get involved, you will definitely meet people. And like you mentioned before, PC is very small and is very much a community college. So everyone tends to be pretty nice and you can make friends pretty easily. Like I said, like at the orientation, pretty much everyone's going to be willing to make, be your friend. And with the, um, the hunger and poverty outreach, we're like all in a small van together every week. So we have to get along in the immersion trip. They're forcing us to bond all the time. So like, you know, this, it, it's not that it can be difficult if you don't like join a club or you don't have, you know, very, I guess, like partners in certain classes, it might be difficult to get a friend there, but otherwise I don't, I didn't find it that difficult to make a friend. Yeah, I think Celine's 100% right um, about putting yourself really out there. I, I give this spiel every time I kind of talk to either my transfer students or new students in general is pretend that you're a freshman again when you come um, into the to PC because you really just need to put yourself out there if you want um, to get the most out of any college, but you know, transitioning, might not be the easiest thing for everyone. I know I walked into club tennis on like the first week of school and met my best friend, Kate, who lives right next to me now in our senior house. And we've been friends since that, but that doesn't mean that I had, um, you know, the perfect experience the first day I got here. It took me a little while, a couple of weeks to get acclimated, just like I would, or just like I did freshman year, same kind of idea, but you really, I was really proud of myself for putting myself out there and, you know, pushing myself to join more clubs and to just talk to people. Don't be scared to just, you know, introduce yourself to someone new. And at this point now, senior year, I forget that I'm a transfer student. People don't even ask me um, if I was here freshman year or not. It really doesn't matter. I know just as many people as everybody else at this school. And I think it's all about who you surround yourself with and how you kind of put yourself in that position. Great. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And that's kind of um, leads into another question that a lot of students are always wondering. Um, um, who and what were the resources that you turned to um, when you were transferring to Providence? Um, and and what, what are the resources that you found most helpful in that transition um, to campus? I honestly just used the Providence College website for like everything, for like what I needed to get for like the Common App, all that. I think I'm pretty, I also asked Sandy Miller, the previous uh, transfer as a coordinator or something. Yeah, who, yeah, I have questions about like, you know, what I need to get and um, would I graduate in like X amount of time? And she was also very helpful. And once the second that I, you know, I got admitted and I got my advisor, he's been, you know, my rock throughout all of this. Um, Dr. Toth, love him so much. So yeah, I think he was like, definitely like the, once I got here, like the biggest resource I had for absolutely everything that I need to get done. That's great. Yeah, I would say the same thing. I was all over the PC website, um, reaching out to Sandy, and now reach out to Diana if you um, have any questions, but really finding someone you can talk to um, regularly. I know I had a few um, distant friends from high school from my hometown that um, were already at PC freshman year, so I kind of reached out to them, and they were a great help. I got to visit them, but obviously um, everyone's situation is different. Trying to find, I think, someone on campus that you can talk to, and even Peter Palumbo, who's um, one of the advisors, he kind of helps the undecided, undeclared students. He helped me create my schedule, helped me figure out my credits and everything like that, but kind of trying to, you know, keep up with yourself and make sure, you know, you're staying on top of where you want to, you know, place applications to or where you decide that um, you might want to go, just being able to find that connection and keeping up with it and finding out as much information as possible. And, you know, making that decision with all that information and kind of lay it out in front of yourself. And um, it's a big step to take, but it 
it's a great step and I could not see my life right now any other way that might sound a little corny but I'm really happy that I'm here and I, I seriously couldn't see myself um, not at PC and graduating in a few months which is scary to say like Celine said but very exciting. Oh absolutely absolutely um, and um, and so you know within um, within our our different students who um, you know are, are thinking about the transfer um, and um, and they're wondering about the transfer process in general. Is there anything you feel like you missed out on or didn't get um, as a transfer student? The only thing that really comes to mind was like the neuroscience certificate, because uh -huh. I if I could have done it if I had wanted to stay like another like extra semester or two, but I don't want to. Um, so that's the one thing I feel like I could have like done if I had come here early when I wish I really did and also just you know do research for longer than I have been doing um, but overall like I wouldn't change my decision of coming here, like any other way I'm just that I wish I had to come here earlier pretty much <laughs> for sure yeah absolutely I feel the same way I really don't think I miss out on anything I think Selena and I have really um good points because we're seniors so we've been you know here for for a while but um the only thing I think I've missed out on was the two first semesters of Civ that I got to get out of so that was <laughs> that was a good thing honestly but Civ flew by got good grades you just got to push through um it's a great program but obviously taking two semesters I took two semesters usually you have to take four semesters as Diana mentioned but that's probably the only thing I missed out on everything else everyone that I met treated me equally. I was never seen as just a transfer student or anything like that. Everyone at the school is very welcoming and everyone here really loves PC and they, we even call it Disneyland sometimes where, you know, we don't want to leave. It's, it's a Disneyland type of vibe here. So, yeah. No, absolutely. And, um, and, you know, with, um, with campus too, um, a lot of our students, because everything is so accessible, it's in one central location. Um, it's, it's so helpful. My biggest piece of advice to students is make sure you're asking questions. Never be afraid to ask questions. And to also realize that it's not just freshmen who are always asking questions. You are encouraged to continue asking questions past senior year, after you've graduated. <laughs> um, that's the whole purpose of um, being a student, a college student in general, um, but especially a student on our campus and um, and realizing too that you have a network of different individuals to reach out to and connect with. Um, there was a question about um, different scholarships for transfer students um, applying for spring semester. We don't have any uh, merit scholarships um, for students who apply for spring semester. Um, it is only for fall semester. Um, so just to be aware of that. And, um, and within that, um, uh, too, I do recommend that all students uh, make sure that they're completing the need-based financial aid information. Um, we don't see the need-based financial aid information when we make a selection for a merit scholarship, but um, certainly any institutional aid or grants that can be given to your family will be determined through that need-based financial aid. So make sure you're completing that information. And again, um, it's December 1 for um, our spring, spring term students and May 15th for our fall term students. So just to be aware of that. Um, but, um, but another thing too that I think a lot of students are always wondering about is housing and, um, and what is the housing situation like for both of you? Can you explain um, what ended up happening with your housing? My movie quick, I'm a commuter. I don't, okay. live, yeah, I don't live on campus <laughs> so whenever yeah during orientation I had to help out move people in and I picked McVinney which is the tallest building and that was my biggest mistake um so <laughs> Lily you have the whole housing thing <laughs> I love talking about housing because um I personally love how everything worked out for me housing wise here on campus so Long story short, sophomore year, I got put into Aquinas Hall, which I don't know if you guys have heard about, but it's called AQ for short. And it's kind of like a forced triple situation. There's a couple doubles and there's this rivalry, we call it between Aquinas and Suites because Suites Hall is kind of a suite style dorm. They're newer, you know, big building, which it's amazing building. Don't get me wrong. 
But Aquinas is really where I found my friends and I got to live in kind of that dorm environment still, but living as a transfer student, I think it's super important to be around as many people as possible and meet as many people. So living in a room with two other girls that I didn't know that ended up becoming two of my best friends to this day, we just took a triple picture at senior ring weekend this weekend, the three of us, and we're in different friend groups and do all different things, but we still, you know, sit down for lunch every couple of weeks and still talk to each other. So I think my sophomore year housing situation in Aquinas in that residence life environment was something that really pushed me to get out of my comfort zone. And then junior year, I ended up living in um, a six woman apartment over at Cunningham, which there's a couple different, um, six man suites and then four man suite um sorry six man apartments and four man apartments so the housing on campus is very diverse you can go there's residence halls there's single dorms um there's suite style there's apartments there's really everything and now um senior year i live off campus right off eaton street which um most students that are seniors live off campus and it's just been a great time here we live i live with 10 other girls we all have our own rooms beautiful new house so it's, it's great i think um as a transfer student, if you can live however you feel most comfortable, but if you can really put yourself in a position where you can live around other people and kind of make those connections, um, it was totally worth it because being in, I think a single for me would have kind of pushed me out and made me kind of stay inside more and kind of stick to my own bubble. And even in a suite, which the suites here on campus are, are beautiful, but I knew that, you know, I wanted to be around a million people to kind of just get to introduce myself and really get out there and just kind of give them my spiel about, like I said, um, put yourself out there, kind of put yourself as a freshman again, introducing yourself to as many people as you can and asking a million questions because to, to this day, I still get lost on campus and I, I don't feel bad about it. I really do enjoy asking freshmen that I, that I had, you know, during orientation, Hey, I know I, I saw you during orientation, but I really don't know how to get out of the dining hall this other way. So could you show me? And they love helping me, even though I'm like three years older than them, but it's great. Yeah, and, and don't, I, I wouldn't feel badly for any student as well there. Um, it's amazing to, depending upon where students live um, at, or what parts of campus they may um, have most of their classes or spend most of their time, um, they're going to know more about that part of campus than, than other students. And that, that goes throughout all class years. <laughs> um, but that's another point, you know, never be afraid to ask questions. And, um, and with that too, um, having lots of different resources and people on campus, you'll hear a lot of our students describe the size of Providence as um, a, a comfortable environment where they know at least one or two people um, in, in each room or situation, but then there's also one or two people they've never met before. So there's that ability to have a sense of a comfort zone, but also a chance to consistently meet new individuals on campus. So um, absolutely. Um, but, you know, one of the things too that a lot of students um, are are always wondering too is, um, you know, what what opportunities um, did you feel like um, you had right off the bat in terms of um, your own orientation process um, coming into Providence? What were some things that you felt were really helpful and um, and some things, a piece of advice that you would give to students? message your orientation leader I feel like that's like your first friend pretty much like off the like we're required to be friends with you so like you know I think that was definitely the one thing I like stuck with me to like get help for whatever I needed like you know where's this building and that kind of thing so orientation leader sorry and I'm not just saying that because I was one but yeah <laughs> I think when I came in sophomore year during I was in the orientation program as a student, I really made it my job to talk to everyone in my um, orientation group. So I still have, we had a huge orientation group. I think we had like 30 students, but I think I still talk to at least 20 of them. I see them around campus. We still hang out. We go get lunch at Ray if I'm feeling like Ray or, you know, we'll go off campus and stuff like that. So really, you know, making those first connections I keep saying it, but just like freshman year, if you were in an orientation group, um, you know, just introducing yourself, getting to know um, other people and, and their interests. And then also, like Celine said, you know, getting to know your orientation leader. I still talk to all of my kids, um, even though some of them are my age, that they're always like, hey, what are you doing like for this, this and that? 
and kind of helping them out with any questions, especially as a transfer student, it's a very different process. Um, you're a little bit older, you know, this isn't your first year of college and you might feel like a little uncomfortable talking to your orientation leader. Um, that's, you know, a little bit of the same age, near the same age as you, but not here, not me and Celine, absolutely not. I love, you know, talking to all of everyone on campus, but mainly the orientation transfer kids, because I, we were you, I, we were both you at one point and helping out um, students that, you know, I've gone through the same process is one of my main goals on this campus and making all the transfer students feel like this is home and that you made the right decision, which you will if you come here. But um, yeah, just making those connections and um, always feeling like you can reach out to someone or anyone on this campus. No, that's great. Absolutely. Um, and two things that I did want, I forgot to mention in my presentation um, that I want people to be aware of as well. Um, throughout this process, throughout um, the, your, um, your kind of college search and this application process, like Lily and Celine both mentioned, utilize our web, website. Um, and by all means, too, the transfer webpage has a ton of different resources. Um, you can actually see a transfer equivalency um, database. So it's a course equivalency database. So um, for some of the classes that you might be considering taking at your current college, um, you can see if we've previously articulated those courses. Um, it is updated. Um, so if courses are over five years, they, they come off the list. But um, by all means, um, if we have already articulated something, um, you can see if we if we've done so, and um, and that can give you an idea of what classes might translate over well to our curriculum. Um, you can also um, certainly sign up for a transfer interview if you're interested. Uh, throughout the fall, they are virtual interviews, and so feel free to. Um, sign up for a virtual interview. You'll be meeting with me um, and um, happy to, to talk with you. But also too, if you're just interested in seeing campus, I'd recommend on our main visit webpage, you can register for a campus tour or information session. Um, and, um, and then um, certainly too, if you have an interest in um, seeing a couple of different classes or um, or certainly attending some type of other event on campus, by all means, feel free to connect with me. I'll be happy to put you in touch with um, some students like Celine and Lily, um, who are former transfer students and, and would be happy even just to talk with you via email. Um, happy to provide those resources to you. So um, thank you all for joining tonight and, um, and certainly to utilize my email address um, you can find my co main contact information on that transfer admission page as well. So um, thank you all and, um, and have a great night. And we look forward to hearing from each of you as you continue on with your transfer admission process. Bye guys, have a good night. Bye, have a good night.